The question is, is the reporting true? Prosecutors ready to ask for Trump indictment on obstruction and espionage act charges. Espionage act. Yeah, they don't typically use that. It's rarely used, but Obama used it quite a bit. Now they want to use it on Trump. But Trump denies it. He says he's not been informed of any of this. He doesn't know that it's going to happen. The initial reporting was that Trump's team was informed the indictment would be coming next week. Trump denies it. Now we've got new reporting slightly clarifying, saying that the independent has learned that prosecutors are prepared to ask grand jurors to vote on charges as early as Thursday. I hope you are all ready for this one. This next year is going to be wild. Oh, I'm excited for it. Absolutely. Tucker Carlson gets knocked off the air and then they don't let him make a show. They say, you're not fired, but you can't do your show. So he does it anyway. Now they're threatening to sue him. Well, sending him a legal letter saying he's in breach of contract that some reporting has suggested is a threat of a lawsuit. You then have James O'Keefe suspended, terminated, from his own organization and then sued to stop his work. Oh, boy. I wonder what is to come for the rest of us, because I don't think it stops here and I don't think it's a coincidence. Now, I'm not saying it's a grand conspiracy that somehow Fox News going after Tucker, Project Veritas getting rid of O'Keefe, Donald Trump being prosecuted. I'm not saying they're all related, not directly. It may be more so a standalone complex which for those that are not familiar, is when several people take actions that have a similar outcome, and it appears to be a conspiracy, but it's all individual actions. And this actually makes more sense to me. People do not like Donald Trump. They don't want him to win. And we know for a fact that many people will do anything to stop him. So you don't need a conspiracy. You just need amoral individuals, demonic individuals. I mean, that figuratively, not literally. People of no moral framework to then decide they will come and destroy anybody who stands in the way of their victory in 2024. Surprisingly, Mike Pence seems to think that he's going to win and that that's hilarious. But let's read through this news and we'll talk about where we're at. The main purpose of this segment is not just to rehash some ridiculous story about Trump potentially being indicted, but it's to go over what Charlie Kirk calls the dragnet. I don't know if dragnet is the right way uh, to describe it, Charlie, because that typically refers to weeding out corruption and crime. And this is not what they're doing. But this is what Charlie Kirk says. The dragnet is here. Crossfire MAGA 2024. Tucker benched through 2025. Bannon going to prison. Bongino out at Fox. O'Keefe out and sued Trump to be indicted again. Bragg and Smith coordinated. The worldview Trump has is so threatening to the regime. They are preemptively going scorched earth. Citizens or serfs, that is what this is about. Donald Trump was never supposed to win. Donald Trump is not supposed to be popular. The machine wants to control and squeeze. And you are supposed to keep your mouth shut and do as you're told. As they indoctrinate your kids, destroy your industries. Shut your mouth. Live in the pod. Eat the bugs. But what if you said no? What have you said? I, good sir, and am an unruly American, and I don't take kindly to y'all telling me what to do. Well, the worldview that these powerful elites have is that they're better than you, and they know it. So it's not that you need a conspiracy for any of this to happen. You just need powerful individuals to hate you. That's it. And then each individual does a thing because they all hate Donald Trump, and we know they do. We know Russia Gate was fake. We know Ukraine Gate was fake. We now know the Bidens are implicated in some kind of major bribery scheme that the FBI is desperately trying to conceal. Welcome to the modern era, my friends. I hope you're ready for this one. The Independent reports. The Justice Department is preparing to ask a Washington, D.C. grand jury to indict former President Donald Trump for violating the Espionage Act and for obstruction of justice as soon as Thursday, adding further weight to the legal baggage facing Mr. Trump as he campaigns for his party's nomination in next year's presidential election. Can I just point out that this is shockingly insane election interference? The Independent has learned 
that prosecutors are ready to ask grand jurors to approve an indictment against Mr. Trump for violating a portion of the U.S. criminal code known as Section 793, which prohibits gathering, transmitting or losing any information respecting the national defense. The use of section section 793, which does not make reference to classified information, is understood to be a strategic decision by prosecutors that has been made to short circuit Mr. Trump's ability to claim that he used his authority as president to declassify documents he removed from the White House and kept at his Palm Beach, Florida property long after his term expired in 2021. Joe Biden had classified documents. Are they going after him? You see the game they're playing? They found a new way to go after Trump because everybody knew the classified documents thing would not hold water. So they said, OK, what what else can we muster up? As the saying goes, you show me the man and I will show you the crime. And this is where we're at today in these United States. That section of U.S. criminal law is written in a way that could encompass Mr. Trump's conduct, even if he was authorized to possess the information as president, because it states that anyone who lawfully having possession of access to control over or being entrusted with any document relating to the national defense and willfully communicates, delivers, transmits or causes to be communicated, delivered or transmitted or attempts to communicate, deliver, transmit, blah, blah, blah. You get the point. Can be punished by as many as 10 years in prison. It is understood that prosecutors intend to ask grand jurors to vote on the indictment on Thursday, but that vote could be delayed as much as a week until the next meeting of the grand jury to allow for a complete presentation of evidence or to allow investigators to gather more evidence for a presentation if necessary. A separate grand jury that is meeting in Florida has also been hearing evidence in the documents investigation. That grand jury was impaneled in part to overcome legal issues posed by the fact that some of the crimes allegedly committed by Mr. Trump took place in that jurisdiction, not in Washington. Under federal law, prosecutors must bring charges against federal defendants in the d- jurisdiction where the crimes took place. We'll see. We will see. This ain't doing it. This ain't going to do it. Whatever this, this strategy is of going after Trump in the most ridiculous ways, grand jury is now in Florida and in D.C., and you know D.C. is going to return an indictment. New York already did. They are pulling out all the stops. But I have to wonder why. Are these people really that stupid? Look, I'm not the biggest Trump supporter in the world. I only lean towards Trump right now because I want him to get rid of bureaucrats in D.C. That's about it. I like his foreign policy a lot. I would love to vote for Ron DeSantis if Ron DeSantis appeared to be strong enough and had the charisma to be a leader. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to rag on the guy. I'm a big fan of Ron DeSantis. What he's doing in Florida is tremendous. It is historic. And he would be a great president. No question. This whole infighting between Trump and DeSantis is so stupid. But I don't trust that Ron DeSantis goes in and fires the corrupt individuals. I think Trump does. I also think Trump is is far, far from perfect. He had such bad personnel decisions. I mean, look, a lot of people don't want to accept it, but in his first term, he hired some dumb people. But I'll tell you this, his foreign policy was, was tremendous. The domestic policy was fantastic. He wasn't as successful in many areas as we wanted him to be. He secured parts of the border. I will take it. But what I'm really thinking right now is you can look at the people he hired and he, he was advised by. And you can say, I don't know why he did that. Fauci, for instance, Burks, those are his weak points. And I can say, look, man, you come out and you convince me that Ron DeSantis will fire these corrupt deep state individuals. You get me to believe that I see some action there. All right. I vote for DeSantis. But right now, what I think we need in a president as we're approaching primary season and they're and they're already campaigning. We need someone who's just going to come in and say, look, I'm shutting that down. Give me a few months. I will fire these people. Deal. Ron DeSantis, you make that clear. I'll consider it. Absolutely. Now, to be completely honest, I probably would prefer a libertarian candidate, but I'm a realist. Okay, so it's really coming down to Trump and DeSantis. And everybody knows Trump's the favorite. It's two to one and probably more than that. It's probably definitive as of right now. Who knows what will change? I think Trump's biggest weakness is going to be Fauci, Burks, and the vaccine. No question. We're likely going to hear some exposés on Dr. Fauci and Big Pharma, and Trump loves touting all that stuff. Look, this is a warning to all the biggest Trump supporters. That's your hurdle. Because if we get exposés, if they really want to stop Trump, I tell you this, this is not the way to do it, which is why I'm like, what are they doing? 
persecuting the guy, that's only going to make him more popular. If they really wanted to stop Trump, they would leak something light pretending to Fauci and Trump and say Trump supported this and throw Fauci under the bus. Because I tell you, that's the hardest, the hardest issue for Trump to overcome is I talk to people who maybe don't like Trump, but would vote for him. And then they say like, yeah, but he wouldn't fire Fauci. And that was horrifying. People really need to, you need to make sure you remember exactly what happened from 2022, um, from 2020 to 2022, and even to a certain degree into 2023. People need to, to look at what, what was going on. Never forget what they were doing, shutting down cities, putting sick people in nursing homes. And Fauci was the guy on camera. Fauci was the advisor. Fauci was the funding. So listen, that's Trump's weak point. And it means a lot to me. And, I, and, I, and every time I talk, you get Luke, Luke on the show and he'll be like, Trump hired Fauci. He wouldn't fire the guy or he didn't hire him. But, but Trump had Fauci on his team. And he wouldn't fire him. And I'm like, ah, that's a good point. He should have. I'm not going to blame Trump for not knowing this. But in all honesty, all this does is suggest that Trump does fire everybody when he gets in. So if you came to me right now and say, you know, Trump had Fauci on his team, I'm like, yeah, pretty sure he wishes he fired that guy. Pretty sure. Maybe that's what we'll end up seeing. Now, I know Ron DeSantis did fire that prosecutor and they freaked out and they're like, how dare you do this? Oh, blah, blah, blah. And that that's promising. It really is. You're not gonna be able to come to me and be like, because Ron DeSantis is, you know, receiving donations from certain individuals or whatever, that means he's bad. I'm sorry, dude. Ron DeSantis has given us everything we've asked for. He has absolutely pushed the line in that direction. And he was a heavy target by the extremists on the far left. And what they say on shows like The View is they want Trump to be the primary candidate because it's easier to beat. You know, to a certain degree, I understand what they're saying. Don't know if I completely agree, but I get why a lot of people would rather have DeSantis. I've gone and talked to regular people. I've, I've you know, I got on the weekends and people will be like, man, you know, Trump's just can't vote for Biden, but Trump is so rough. Like they want to vote for Trump, but they probably would vote for DeSantis. So I don't know. Ultimately, I don't. I think there's two big challenges with DeSantis. One is he's he's we know that that Trump has been president and wants revenge. That's a big factor. And we know what his foreign policy is. Plus, of course, Trump's charismatic in his own way. And Ron is lacking that. So it's tough. It really is. It's a coin toss. I tell you this, as I've long said, the one thing that gets me over that hurdle is Trump says he's going to fire these people. Schedule F. That's all I'm asking. That's what I'm saying. I, and, you know, a lot of people are like, Ron DeSantis has the foreign policy experience. He definitely does. But Trump's foreign policy was the best we've ever seen in my lifetime. Yep. Agreed. So you got to really convince me, man, these people. But to be honest, the Democrats, the establishment, the machine, they would prefer neither. Let's be real. They, they lie, cheat and steal all day. They, they are trying to criminally prosecute Donald Trump in every possible way. Meanwhile, they accuse DeSantis of like, don't say gay, of being a fascist. And they're having trouble with it, to be completely honest. So this is I find hilarious. Maybe the reason Ron's coming out and being so tepid is that it makes it very difficult to attack him. When he comes out, he's like, Fredo is worth fighting for. It's like, what are you going to do? The only people who are insulting him over that are, uh, it's us, <laughs> like being like, where's the charisma? Look at this. Newsweek says, Trump target letter signals final steps before indictment, according to legal experts. So get ready. It ain't stopping here. Now, Trump has denied this. Trump said, no one has told me I'm being indicted, refuting claims DOJ has contacted him. But this story was initially that the DOJ reached out to the Trump team and said, you're going to be indicted. Trump then said, no, that never happened. Now the reporting's coming out being like, well, they're preparing an indictment. It's like, okay, we'll see. Now, as for what Charlie Kirk said, this is where I think things get very, very interesting. And of course, we are all on a particularly high alert because of it. I'd like to give a shout out to, a shout out to Tucker Carlson's 102.5 million views on the first episode of his new show. I don't think all of his episodes will carry that much weight, but that one is particularly massive. But this is the point. This is where we're at. James O'Keefe, frozen. They're suing him. Tucker Carlson, targeted, shut down, silenced. Donald Trump, they're trying to indict. I wonder what they have in store for us, to be completely honest. I don't know. I really don't. 
Don't know what the game is. Don't know what the play is. Don't know what the plan is. But it looks like it's not going to be particularly effective. Try as they might. We talked about it last night on Timcast IRL. I said, I, I don't believe that is a coincidence that Tucker and O'Keefe were both frozen out in the exact same way. Suspended, but not fired, claiming the companies. James O'Keefe says he was fired. And I think that's a fair assessment. The idea that he would be removed and told he can't work. And then when he goes and does his own independent work, they sue him over it. Yo, that's crazy. Now it's Tucker Carlson, basically the same thing. They take his show off the air. And then when he posts a video to Twitter where he just talks, they say you're in breach of contract. They are trying to silence the opposition. Completely unsurprising. They did it with Alex Jones. They did it with many right wing personalities in, I think this was what, 2018, 2019? Made sense. These prominent individuals helped Trump get elected. So they say we got to silence their voice. Do you think they will not do the same thing this time around? Makes me wonder. I don't know what they can do. The line only goes so far. Tucker Carlson's a fairly tepid individual. No, I know a lot of people think that he's a strong speaker with good ideas and he calls it the narrative. I'm not saying he doesn't. I'm saying he's not bombastic like Alex Jones. He doesn't have the same kind of presentation. He simply makes a show and he makes his argument and his argument helps sway people away from the establishment. So what can you do? You can't just go and arrest him for nothing. You can't get him banned for nothing. Elon owns Twitter, is promoting all of this stuff. What can you do? Legal jam up. Same thing for James O'Keefe. What are you going to do? You can't arrest him. He's a media personality. You, you, they've tried censoring and banning him, but Twitter's back. Twitter brought him back. So it's getting tough. All they can really do is try and use lawsuits. It's a fairly weak strategy. And that's the challenge they have with channels like ours. Fairly tepid. You know, we make our arguments. We keep them fairly academic. We don't. I always tell people, especially with Timcast IRL, look, man, we're not crass. We're not crude. We try to be we try to be better. We try to be academic. But you know, like be yourself. I tell people all the time there are certain things YouTube will ban us for. We have no rules. I mean, personally, I would not appreciate it if someone came on my show and said horrible things. And Kanye West came on my show and said nasty things. And I just told him he was wrong. And he got mad. And he stormed off. I don't play that. But we're we, we uh, we're fairly uh, middle of the road. You know, we're fairly calm, collected. Can't really censor us for these things, can you? So what do you do? I don't know. I'd imagine there might be attempts, and there have been, to get us to sign contracts that would eventually jam us up in certain ways. That's a possibility. Right now, we are beholden to no one. It's the best thing. The strategy that we've taken here at Timcast is decentralization of uh, resource acquisition. So instead of doing a contract with a network where it's like they pay us X in exchange for a show, we've just made a bunch of shows and then diversified our revenue streams, which would be very, very difficult to stop. Not to mention you all as members at TimCast.com also make it very difficult to stop. We use parallel economy to run uh, our memberships. We use multiple processors, but primarily parallel economy, which is Dan Bongino. uh, uh, I believe he's the principal investor in that. We use Rumble infrastructure, not perfect, no guarantees, but fairly resilient. And so I tell you this, the battle is not over. The war has not been lost. The war has not been won. If they were as powerful as people, some people believe they are, these conspira- the, the people who believe in the big conspiracies, the propaganda would not be necessary. If they were as powerful as some of these conspiracy theorists believe, they would not need to try and shut down Tucker or imprison Trump. They would simply control the narrative however they saw fit. The fact that the efforts being taken against Trump struggle shows that this is a winnable conflict for the heart and soul of America. And so I leave you with this, my friends. We're winning. No question. Parents are rising up against the groomers. Bud Light collapsing. Regular people are saying enough. We're not going to we're not going to go along with this and you can't control us. Try as they might silence their opponents, everything. It does not work. It is the indestructible spirit of America, though they may beat it back. It comes back stronger. And so I'm fairly confident.
I really am. Seeing everything we did yesterday, these cities are collapsing. What, what did you have in San Francisco? The Hilton surrendered itself to its lenders. The company that owns the Hilton and Park 55 surrendered their hotels to their lenders. That's horrifying. Imagine having a failing business and then telling the lenders like, eh, it's yours now. Buy your deal. Brutal. We're watching all of these things, these things happen in real time. And it's showing that the Democrat policies are failing, that regular people are succeeding. And I think we're going to I think we're going to make it. I think we're going to succeed. I think we are going to win this one. Despite everything they're trying to do, it doesn't stick and it won't work. And look, I know there's a lot of people who are just 100% for, for Trump, don't like DeSantis. Right now, what we're looking at between Trump and DeSantis is victory. No question. If DeSantis becomes president, we win. No, don't come at me and be like, oh, he's a neocon, he's jab, he's whatever. It's like, bro, I'm, I'm sorry, man. You can't have a dude fight tooth and nail in Florida to give the people everything they need and want and then be like, no, it's bad. <laughs> like, if you can't accept that victory, you can't accept victory at all. So I don't buy it. But we'll see, man. I will say as an aside, dude, no, seriously, the air is really bad. It is like I can feel it right now. This is nuts. It's just it's not it's not easy. I'm not kidding. The air is really, really bad. So I got to figure something out. I might have to go record somewhere else. No question because of uh, how bad it is. Yeah, but I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you all then.